Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Wednesday, July 24th. I'm Mark Dent here with Catherine Laidlaw, and this is the Hustle Daily Show. Last week, CrowdStrike sent the internet and the world economy spiraling when a faulty system update triggered one of the worst computer outages in history. It was not a good day if you worked at all in corporate America or really any part of America. But the aftershocks are actually still being felt, particularly in the airline industry. So when will all of these problems end? And is there anything we're going to do to prevent this chaos from striking again? We'll be chatting all about that in a minute, but first let's give you the hits and headlines in business and tech. Starting off, we have actually some other cybersecurity type of news that doesn't involve CrowdStrike. The company Wiz declined Google's $23 billion acquisition and is now going to pursue an IPO, according to a memo Wiz CEO Ossoff Rappaport sent to employees. The FTC is investigating how companies like MasterCard, JP Morgan Chase, and Accenture are using AI for surveillance pricing. This is a practice that charges customers different amounts based on their personal data. Catherine, the FTC has been pretty busy lately, but um, it sounds like you think this is something that they really should be focusing on. Well, yeah, I just think like the natural, most horrifying extension of a practice like this is the algorithm sort of going rogue and charging people different amounts based on not just their personal data, but their personal characteristics. So groups of different groups of people being charged more, or higher interest rates and things like that. And so I just think getting a handle on it sooner rather than later will probably save us all a huge regulatory headache in the future. Yeah, definitely. And uh, Lena Khan, the chair of the FTC, has described this as a shadowy ecosystem of pricing the middlemen. And obviously there's AI involved, so it's a whole new world. Okay, let's move on now to another AI story, which involves Condé Nast. The publisher sent a cease and desist letter to the AI search engine Perplexity, demanding that it stop using content from Condé Nast publications in its search results. Red Lobster only got one acquisition offer as it seeks to exit bankruptcy. The likely new owner, Fortress Investment Group, will have a deep hole to climb out of. The seafood chain owes 100,000 plus creditors. Moving on to, uh, let's just call it billionaire news. California Forever, the heavily scrutinized billionaire-funded city, which is being built just outside of the Bay Area, is on pause for two years as it develops an environmental impact report. Uh, California Forever, I thought, was supposed to kind of get away from all the bureaucracy and needing reports and all of this. This doesn't seem right, Catherine. Yeah, I thought billionaires were supposed to be able to buy their way out of red tape. Yeah, it, it hasn't happened here. Of course, it is for an environmental impact report, but these are the kinds of different processes that have led to a lot of housing supply problems and housing expense problems here in the US. And again, that's exactly what they're trying to kind of solve here. So it is quite ironic that they're gonna have to kind of be on the sidelines for two years. A little mystifying. Just a little bit. Finally, Amazon is launching an expansive UI upgrade for Prime Video, which is going to focus on simplicity and add personalization. And us here at The Hustle Hope address the biggest problem with the past interface, which is that it is really, really not user-friendly or good at all. So keep an eye out on your Prime Video and see if it gets better. But let's move on to the main story. When cybersecurity firm CrowdStrike released an automated system update on Friday, it didn't think it would take down the internet. But the problem is it did. CrowdStrike's update had some flawed code in it that caused systems to crash across the globe. And now we're about five days later and businesses are still struggling to get back online and back on schedule. Some experts say that this outage shows just how close we are to chaos and that it could be hard for things to change in the future. Certainly, that's kind of how it's been in the past when stuff like this has occurred. But first off, Catherine, we know that the CrowdStrike outage affected around eight and a half million Windows devices, and it caused huge issues for airlines and hospitals. As we're five days out from this, what's still being affected by it? 
Yeah. So the main company that's sort of taking the blows at this stage is Delta. The airline had to cancel hundreds of flights yesterday for the fifth day in a row. Yikes. It's into the thousands now of flights that they had to cancel over five days. Basically, what happened was its crew scheduling software was affected by CrowdStrike. Other airlines weren't affected in the same way. Basically, what that meant for Delta was that it made it hard to tell where their crew members were. That seems important. You kind of need to know where they are. (laughs) You sort of want to have eyes on your employees. Yeah. (laughs) One aviation analyst put the cost to Delta actually at $163 million and counting. And so Delta has definitely taken a hit in all of this. And, you know, the Department of Transportation has also started to kind of get involved. So we'll see where that goes. When Southwest had similar problems just a year and a half ago, it ended up costing them just from the federal government alone, from a fine, more than $100 million. So uh, that tab is probably going to keep going up for Delta. But moving on from sort of the very acute problem that we're seeing here, which, you know, right now is especially Delta, we'll say one more time, what else should we learn from this? What has this outage showed us, Catherine? Yeah, so the general consensus from experts seems to be that we've had scary outages before. There will definitely be scary outages again. But what makes this one different is that it really underscores just how interconnected the world has become when it comes to the software that sort of underlies all of the systems that we all use every day through a network almost no one understands and which is largely self-regulating. Yeah. I mean, most of us are just like, let me turn on my computer, you know? Right. And that's probably what we all understand for the most part. I want to pay for my lunch order. I want to make an Interac e-transfer, like all of these sort of day-to-day tasks that we see as so mundane and really take for granted (laughs) that can happen to keep the wheels sort of running every day, right? So what are people saying when they look at this as like a big picture? What are some of the issues that there were with CrowdStrike that apply somewhat universally and could creep up again? Yeah, so there are a few central things that people are talking about, a few big sort of failure points, as it were. One is there's too much of a mix of legacy software mixed with new software that sort of underscores these systems. There are not enough backups to keep things running to prevent something like this from happening again. And thirdly, the outage had to be manually fixed by humans. And so it basically involved restarting the system in safe mode and then going in and manually deleting the file and then restarting the system again. It, as you can imagine, took eons of time, which a lot of these businesses didn't have. And so there wasn't a quick fix to the outage either, which also created a problem in which experts are saying that we sort of need to know a little bit more about the systems that we're using. Like we're overly dependent on systems we don't understand and we don't realize how truly dependent we are on them until they stop working for us. Mm. And so are there going to be any consequences for CrowdStrike coming out of this? Their stock has gone down over the last few days. I think it's down about 20% since Friday, the last I was able to check on Tuesday afternoon at least. But is there any other news regarding what's going to happen to CrowdStrike? Yeah, so Congress has actually asked its CEO to testify, and so we should learn more about... That's never a good feeling. (laughs) Never a good outlook. (laughs) That guy's having a bad few days. The FTC has also announced that it might investigate. Lena Khan said that, quote, these incidents reveal how concentration can create fragile systems, which really speaks to what a couple of the major issues coming out of this have been, that we have sort of an over-reliance and a weak understanding. And as a result, CrowdStrike and similar companies might face more regulations that would force them to better test their updates before rolling them out to customers, for example, and create potentially more redundancy in critical infrastructure so they're less vulnerable if one component of a system breaks down. That would seem to be a pretty good fix, at least for starters, I would think. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's always the argument between redundancy and efficiency. But in this instance, if it sort of props up the world economies on its shoulders, then it seems worth it. Yeah. And it's funny, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, I had a conversation here on the podcast with Peter Goodman of the New York Times, and we were talking about the global supply chain. And the whole thing with the global supply chain is that, you know, for basically the last 75 years, it's been about efficiency 
and not redundancy. Instead of like making it really strong and very much invulnerable to issues like pandemics or whatever might happen, whether it's like a ship, you know, getting stuck in like the Suez Canal, as we saw happen a few years ago. Instead, it's just been leaning into efficiency over and over and over. I feel like we've had at least somewhat of a wake up call regarding the supply chain maybe just maybe this will be the wake up call for everything within the pipes, everything that we don't realize what's going on in our software and hardware systems. Our software infrastructure. Yeah. It's so funny because I was reading a piece in The Atlantic that talked about this and talked about how future proofing for these kinds of things is hard because we don't know what hasn't happened, right? Like you can sort of lean on efficiency because you actually don't know if you have prevented some kind of disaster because the disaster never comes to pass. And so it's a bit of a tricky argument to make, but I think that this is definitely shining some light on how much we need to sort of have a stronger foundation in place. Yeah, and I think now we do know what can happen. I know that there are people at airports in like Minneapolis and Atlanta who've been there for, oh, I don't know, two or three days in a row. They know what can happen. And I think they would like to have this fixed. I know that for sure. For the people in airports, this is for you. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us today. Thank you, everyone, for tuning into the Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Robert Hartwig, and our executive producer is Darren Clark. We've got a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter. So if you're not subscribed, please go get signed up at thehustle.co slash email, and we will see you tomorrow.